So before we start uh, today's lecture, do you have any question? Do you have any question regarding midterm exam or uh, do you have any question regarding topic four, topic three, topic two, or topic one? Anybody has any question? No question? Yes, you can have quiz related to LIFO and FIFO. Yes, every topic, topic one to topic uh, six, but you will not have any calculations. You, you, you rarely find any calculation in your uh, midterm exam, very hardly, but I don't think so you can find any calculations. But the way to calculate calculations, you may need it to understand because that I, I may ask in your exams, but of course, no calculations question because only a midterm uh, mid, uh, it's just a multiple choice question and it's very hard for me to uh, to prepare a life of FIFO question or uh, direct distribution method uh, in your midterm exam means that all about uh, therapy teacher the yeah, theory or all, all the theory questions all right so all the theory or the concepts you need to know how we calculate this and how we calculate that, the way to calculate, all right? But of course, not a number, all right? The procedure or the steps, like as in today's lecture, we will have a look some steps to calculate uh, overhead cost using two different methods, which is activity-based costing and uh, a traditional costing. So you need to know the steps and the procedure. Same thing, uh, uh, direct distribution method, step-down method, or uh, algebraic method. You need to know uh, what when we apply direct distribution method, when we apply algebraic method or maybe step down method, you need to know. All right. But of course, I will not make any cal calculation question from this uh, uh, three, three different methods. All right. So same thing. You need to know um, uh, types of cost, different types of cost we have uh, in our business. All right. So you need to know all that kind of uh, information. Any other question regarding midterm exam or any other question regarding uh, topic one to topic four, whatever we cover until uh, previous uh, class? Any other question or we start? Tell me if any question or we should start. Say something we should start or any question. Okay, I'll start and start. If anything you do not understand, make sure you ask me. Um, you ask me a question. You can directly ask, or you can write any question in in, in chat box. Right. So now uh, the next. Uh, yes, any question? Okay, uh, I will send you, um, did you receive the video from the previous lecture? Okay, uh, we will finish class today around three. So, uh, and I think it will take time, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes to upload the file. So I will try to send you um, the video um, before, Four, four or around 4.30, so today. 
So 4, 4.30. So let's say before 5. So before 5, I will send you uh, this video, right? Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> So again, we still continue uh, topic four, which is uh, accounting for overhead. Accounting for overhead. So uh, what we're gonna study in today's lecture we're gonna study about overhead, cost, estimation method. Overhead cost estimation method. All right. So let's take an example to understand what this overhead cost estimation method. For example, let's say um, this is a product. This pen is a product, right? And this product is a combination of three types of cost, right? Which is direct material, direct material cost, Second is a direct labor cost. And the third is a overhead cost, right? So this cost is a combination of three different types of cost, right? So direct material, direct labor, and overheads. This is your total manufacturing cost, right? So total manufacturing cost. So total manufacturing cost. So now this pen is a combination of three types of cost, direct material, direct labor, and overheads, all right? So can you tell me, when we are estimating the three different types of cost, which is direct material, direct labor, and overhead, which type of cost is easy to calculate? Or which type of cost is not easy to calculate? So let's, let's talk about the cost which we cannot easily calculate in these three different types of cost. Can you tell me which cost we cannot easily identify or it's difficult to identify? It's not uh, clearly visible. We, we, we cannot directly see that. The contribution of the cost to make this pen. Tell me which cost, direct material, direct labor or overhead? Overheads. Yes, it's overhead. You know that, why overhead? Because you know that overhead cost involve many, many things, many costs. Let's say it's involved depreciation, right? It's involved maybe rent. It's involved maybe insurance, right? This cost also involve maybe the service department cost that we studied previously, right? Service department cost. So that's your overhead cost, right? So same thing, we cannot easily find out what is the contribution of depreciation because depreciation is a cost that we must consider when we calculating the total cost of this pen. So it's very hard for us to find out what is the contribution of depreciation to complete this product. Similarly, what is the contribution of rent, insurance, or service department cost to complete this product? 
right? We cannot easily find out. But if you look at direct material and direct labor cost, these two type of cost, which is also direct cost, these two types of cost can, 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 can be clearly visible, all right? We can, we can clearly see that, all right? For example, material, how many plastics? We use it to make this pen. So let's say we have a one kilogram uh, plastic, right? So we purchase one kilogram raw material. And in this one kilogram raw material, let's say we are making um, uh, 100 pen from that one kilogram plastic. So one product on an average, let's say 10 gram. So 10 gram is a contribution, 10 gram material involved. And what is the cost of one kilogram? Let's say $100. So material cost is $1 right for this pen same thing for labor how much money we are paying our labor to work by hour or by product by hour let's say worker work one hour and we pay uh, 30 dollars for one hour right and in one hour how many pen this worker produce let's say this worker produce 30 pen in one hour so on an average one dollar one pen is a cost hourly cost of the worker Right. Same thing with the same thing with the uh, so material and labor are easy to estimate, but overhead cost is not easy to estimate. So that's why the question is, how can we estimate this overhead cost? How can we calculate the overhead cost of this pen? We can find out the total overheads, but how can we estimate by in order to make this pen? So uh, in order to estimate overhead cost, in order to estimate overhead cost, we have method. We have two methods to Uh, student, one more thing. Uh, when whenever you sign in in the student list, so make sure you use your 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 name, all right? So don't use your abbreviations or don't use your your first name or last name. So try to make your ID by using full name and your student ID. If if you do that, that's easy for me to track. Uh, I mean, easy for me to find out who is in in this online class. And second thing is, it's also easier for the monitor to check the attendance, right? So please uh, do not, um, so do not change any other name, right? So, Okay, uh, now, so we have our two methods to estimate overhead cost, right? So in these two methods involve, we have one is a one and two. Right? So the one is a traditional costing method. Traditional costing method and second one is a ABC stands for activity based costing activity based costing ABC right so we have uh, two different methods to allocate overhead cost all right so these two methods are your choice, all right? You can apply either traditional costing 
or activity based costing all right it's completely depends upon company generally generally uh, small companies they apply traditional costing and large companies apply activity based costing so there is a reason behind it why small company apply traditional costing uh, why activity based uh, costing apply by these large companies so in order to understand the reasons we have to look at the calculation first but i'm going to give you very quick ideas a uh, quick information that why small company and why large companies uh, when you will study the calculation of activity based costing then you will find out that activity based costing is a time consuming process all right it's a time consuming process which means uh, it takes time to it takes time to uh, to to estimate overhead cost activity based costing because uh, it depends upon the activity you have to calculate how many activities involve how many actions or how many things involved to to produce this product activity that, which affects the overhead cost right so you have to find out so that's why it's time consuming process as a result your estimation cost your calculation cost or in simple words cost for accounting or accountant cost will be increased which small company may not afford it all right but large company they much more um, concerned regarding the the accuracy of cost estimation that's why activity based costing result is much more accurate than the traditional costing all right traditional costing has a less accuracy why it has a less accuracy because under traditional costing you may not cover all different kinds of activities all right so uh, th this is very quick information that uh, that why small company apply traditional costing and why large company apply activity based costing right but when i finish uh, calculating both uh, methods then you will be able to find out that which method is most accurate methods in order uh, to estimate the overhead cost all right you will able to find this one and uh, by by comparing the cost which is calculated under traditional costing and the cost calculated under activity based costing that may not be the same that's mean may not be same it is it's, it's coincidence if the cost estimation under traditional and activity based costing is the same if if they have us only one activity but obviously that thing doesn't really happen now what does it mean activity that i'm that i'm using again and again this information i will also explain you later when we come up with the activity based costing calculations all right so this is very quick uh, ideas regarding traditional costing and activity based costing so let's move on to the calculation um uh, for activity uh, for overhead cost so we start with the traditional costing first traditional costing and then later we will study uh, activity based costing all right so before we move on anybody has any question Any question? Say something. Anybody has any question? If no questions, I think I need to sign out and sign in again because just five minutes are left. And um, then, if if I will not sign out, if I'm start writing, then I have to start over again. So let's let me sign out and then sign in. So, in order to uh, estimate traditional costing, we have to apply uh, steps. So we will we will apply all these steps to estimate 
uh, overhead cost using traditional cost. All right. So first of all, step one. So we're going to have a look various steps. So step one. Step one is find find total overhead cost. Find total overhead cost. All right. So you have to you have to read the questions. Information is given in your question that how how much is the total overhead cost? All right. So you can easily see this information in your question. Second. Second step is find machine hour, machine hour or labor hour or labor hour. Machine hours or labor hour. So machine hour means uh, machine hour involve um, uh, to estimate the overhead cost, right? Or some labor, let's say indirect labor, and you pay that indirect labor uh, by hour. So that's your labor hours, right? For indirect cost. So so the machine hours that contributed in in a overhead, right? Labor hour means the labor hour contribute in a in an overhead cost. So remember, both machine hour and labor hour belongs to overheads. All right, machine hour that come from the overheads, right? Or machine hour come from the overhead, right? Okay, but sometimes in your question, both are given: machine hour and labor hour, right? If both machine hour and labor hours are given, then you have to Then, then you have to use whichever is higher. Whichever is higher. Whichever number is higher between machine hour and the labor hour, you will select it to find step two, complete step two. All right, so I hope you understand whichever is higher. So let's say machine hour 100 hours, and labor hour 120 hours. So we will choose labor hour in our step two. Right? So we apply uh, labor hours in step two and following this step two, we will move on to step three, all right? Next, step three. Step three is find overhead rate. Overhead absorption. Find overhead absorption rate. This this overhead rate will be calculated using step one and step two. So step one divided by step two. This is your rate. Rate means obviously dollar. So it's a rate per maybe machine hour or labor hour. If step two is a machine hour, this is rate per machine hour, right? If step two is a labor hour, then rate per labor hour. So make sure you have to write full. <laughs> not just simply write rate, which is dollar, not just rate per hour, which hour, machine hour or labor hour. You have to go very specifically. All right, so this is your step three. So I repeat, step three is step one, which is total overheads, all right? And step two, which is your machine hour or labor hour, whichever is higher. So let's say labor hour is higher than the machine hour, for example. Then 
in step two you use here labor hours so your rate so this divided by this so whatever number that's your money right whatever number money or comes here that consider as a dollar let's say five dollar per labor hour all right so this is your step three next is your step four step four is allocate overhead cost overhead cost using rate from rate from step three whatever rate we calculated in step three we use rate to allocate overhead cost for example for example this rate is let's say five dollar per labor hour right five dollar per labor hour and labor when work to make this pen labor work let's say three hours to complete this pen so three hours multiply by five which is 15 so 15 dollar is the overhead cost of this pen all right or maybe um yes so overhead cost per per unit so that's your step four right now step five step five is calculate total cost per unit calculate total cost per unit so total cost is a combination of overhead direct labor and direct material overhead we just calculated in step four right step four gives you overhead this direct material and direct labor is given in your question given in your question you don't have to estimate this labor direct labor and direct direct labor and direct material these two, two numbers will be given in your question why because of obviously traditional costing method apply for overheads it doesn't apply for direct material or direct labor right so that's the whole idea here so step five is complete your total cost per unit so remember per unit if overhead cost whatever you calculated in step four if this overhead cost is not per unit so let's say overhead cost for 1000 unit you produce 1000 unit then this number divided by 1000 unit so you have a co overhead cost per unit and then you check in your question direct labor and direct material is given in per unit so no but mostly direct material and direct labor given in your per unit so you will use it this per unit per unit so this plus this all these three costs will be total cost per unit all right so that's that's the whole idea for your uh traditional costing so now let me give you some example to estimate this traditional costing then we open the file the file i sent you before so we will open that file to to read the question and then you will calculate overhead cost using traditional costing all right remember sometime in your question you may have to calculate step five so it depends upon your question what i'm asking you in your question sometimes i ask calculate total cost per unit if i'm asking total cost per unit then obviously i will give you direct material and direct labor right but if i don't say anything about total cost then you have to simply cal if i say that calculate cost using traditional costing or activity based costing so obviously if i'm saying that calculate cost using traditional costing or activity based costing then i'm only talking about overhead cost so i'm not talking about total cost so make sure you read the question carefully what i'm asking the requirements of question all right so uh, let me give you example here for example 
total overhead cost, let's say it's $1,000. All right, total overhead cost is a $1,000. And machine hour, let's say um, 80. And labor hour, let's say um, 100. All right. Now, and we have some additional information as well. Additional information means, for example, you have a, a product X, all right? If you produce product X and you have a product Y, if you produce product X, you have some machine hours and you have some labor hours. If you produce product X, product X require three machine hours and two labor hours, all right? And product Y require four machine hours and six labor hours. All right, if you produce, let's say only one, this is only one unit, one product, which is X only one, Y only one. If you produce product X, machine need to run three hours to make product X. For product Y, machine need to run four hours. And regarding labor hours, product X require two labor hours, product Y, require six labor hours. So you have a uh, this information. You have this information regarding your product. All right. Now, so calculate uh, overhead cost or total cost for that. So, but we don't have any information about material. So we don't have to material labor, then you may not have to do step five. It's only step four until step four. So now, Step one, we already have a uh, total overhead, which is 1000, right? Step two, machine hour and labor hours, whichever is higher. So we will use 100 labor hours. So we choose step, in step two, we choose labor hour, which is 100. Now, find overhead absorption rate, which is step one divided by step two. Step one, is 1000 and step two is 100 labor hours all right so 1000 divided by 100 which is 10 dollar per labor hour so means you will pay you will spend 10 dollar per labor hour so involve uh, indirectly obviously because this is indirect cost now step four allocate overhead cost using rate so rate is a ten dollars rate is a ten dollars labor hours multiply by four let's say this is for product product x and this is for product why so product x ten dollars per labor hour now you will choose only labor hours which is two not machine hour because your rate is a labor hour so obviously you have to uh, multiply by you have to multiply by labor hours so 10 multiply by two which is twenty dollars so $20 is the overhead cost of product X, one, one X, one product, right? And product Y, labor cost, multiply by six, right? Six, which is 60. So $60 is the overhead cost for product Y. So this is your step four. Step four is finished. If step five, you have material cost, let's say 
material cost for product X is 25 and labor cost, let's say $30, right? Here, let's say 20 plus, let's say uh, 30, right? So it's become 50, 70, 75. 75 is the total cost for product X. And here, six, eight, 110. So 110, $110 is the total cost for product Y. This is your step five. That's your traditional costing method. All right. Is that okay? Any question regarding traditional costing? Tell me any question, traditional costing? Step three. Step three is a fine overhead absorption rate. Overhead absorption rate means what will be the cost per unit? Overhead cost per unit or per hour? So obviously per hour, maybe machine hour or labor hour. Depends, we are using uh, step two is a machine hour or labor hour. So step three is step one divided by step two, all right? Step one and step two. Step one is your uh, and step two, And step two is your uh, machine uh, labor hours because labor hours are more than machine hour. Labor hour 100 and machine hour are 80, All right? Uh, that's your step three. Okay. Another student asked me a question, where are 25 and 30 come from? These 25 and 30s are just my example. It's just a random number, all right? This number will be given in your question. That's what I said. Direct material and direct labor will be given in your question. This is overhead. This is your overhead. All right, here. And these two numbers are your material and labor that will be given in your question. That will be given in your question. All right. So, is that okay? Any question? Any question or we move on? Any question or we move on? Okay, so let's move on. So now we need to open the, the file that I sent you before. So this file. Can you see this file? Can you see this file, yes or no? All right. So you have a two questions in this file, if you see. Um, question one and question two. So we will do it question one first, right? And then once we finish ABC, then we complete question one, and then we will do it question two, all right? So, um, so let's read question one.
So it says that the job costing system at Smith's custom framing has five indirect cost pool. So cost pool is, is the is the combination of cost pool is a called total overheads. So why we have total overheads? Various reasons, like as a material handling, machine maintenance, product inspection, or packaging. So all these are the factors that affect your total overhead. So cost pool, combination of all cost pool is a total overhead. Right? Company is in the process of bidding on two hops, job 215, which is mainly your product, an order of 15 intricate personalized frame, all right? So 15 products for your product, which called job 215. So job 215 is a one product. And job three to six has a six order, all right? So I mean six units. The controller wants you to compare overhead allocate under current simple job costing system. Current simple means traditional costing. That's your, another name of traditional costing is a simple costing. That's your traditional costing. traditional costing and newly designed activity based costing so this is your abc all right activity based costing activity based costing right so two methods so activity based job costing all right so you will compare so of course you calculate traditional cost and abc but you don't have to worry abc for this moment, because I haven't explained you. All right, so you will do only traditional costing. Uh, total budget cost in a, each indirect cost pool and budgeted quantity of activity drivers are as follows. So you have uh, some specific information, right? So this is your different cost pool and combination of all, all cost pool is your total overheads, all right? This is your total overhead, as I said, as I said you before, combination of all cost pool will be total overhead. So this is some additional information, like as uh, purchase order process 2000, means 2000 uh, order, and the cost of 2000 is a 70,000, right? You order 2000 time, and the cost is 70,000. Material moves 5000 times, and that's why material handling cost is 87,500. Machine hours are 10,500. So that's why your machine maintenance cost is 237,300. Inspection 1,200. So that's why your product inspection cost is 18,900. And finally, unit produced 3,800, which is based upon the packaging, more packaging, uh, more units produced, more packaging, obviously. So this is your packaging unit packed or unit produced so this is the basic information behind this total overhead so why we have total overhead which is 453 600 so remember all these are overhead cost you can also call them cost pool or different types of overhead so your total overhead is four five three six hundred right now information related to Obviously, we have two jobs that we discussed above, job 215, job 215, and job, job 325. So information related to job 215 and job 325 follows. Job 215 incur more batch level cost because it's used more type of material that needed to be purchased, moved, purchased, moved, inspected relative to job three to five. So these are the information regarding job 215 and job three to five. So which means job 215, we have a 15 products, right? Job 215, we have 15 products, 15 products, and job three to five, we have six products 
six products, six units, 15 units for 215 and six units for 325. Now, if you make 15 products for job 215, you have to order 25 times. Material move, 10 times. Machine hour, 40 times, uh, 40 hours. Number of inspection, nine. And unit produced, which is related to packaging, 15. For job three to five is eight, four, 60, which is your machine hour. Three inspection, six is a unit produced, All right? So now you have to calculate total overheads to each job, each job, not each unit. So not each unit, each job. Each job means each month. So you have to calculate uh, total overhead using traditional costing and activity. Activity, we do it later, all right? So we do it traditional costing first, all right? So now I want you to calculate overhead cost for job 215 and job 325 using traditional costing, all right? So do that now, everybody. Make sure everybody do that and give me your answer. I will see who answer my question and who do not answer. Let's have a look. So let's start. So step one, find total overheads. So I'll write down here, step one. Step one. So traditional costing. Traditional costing. So step one, total overhead, how much? Tell me how much is total overhead so quickly tell me i don't have to ask you again and again four five three six double zero all right second one is a fine machine hour or labor hours so how much Machine hour or labor hours? Yes, machine hour or labor hour, 10,500 machine hours. Yes, so machine hours. 10,500. And step three, so your rate per machine hour. How much? Forty three point two dollar per machine hour. 
right? 43.2. Now step four. So allocate. Allocate. So So allocate your overhead cost, overhead cost. So we have two job, job uh, 215 and job 325, right? Rate will be the same, 43.2 for both, 43.2. Right? So how many machine hours required for job 215, it's 40, right? Which is 1728, and here is 60, which is 2592, right? So that's your answer. All right, so this is your overhead cost for job 215 and job 325. For example, for example, I want you to calculate overhead cost per unit, per unit, right? Then what you will do, 1728, 2592. So what you will do, 1728, If I ask you to calculate overhead cost per unit, tell me how you will calculate overhead cost per unit. Yes, you will divide it by 15 for job 215. And you divide it by, how about job 3 to 5? Job 3 to 5, you will divide it by 6, yes, which is, four, three, two. That's your step five, cost per unit. Depends if I ask total cost per unit or overhead cost per unit, all right? So that is your traditional costing for question one. This is your question one. Any question regarding this question one? Or we move on to question two? Yes, okay, let's move on to question two. Now, question two. So it says that uh, metal produced two types of farming related engines, harrows and rotator, and applies manufacturing overheads to all units at rate of 80 pounds per machine hours. This question is already giving you step three, which is rate per hour, per machine hour. But anyway, question is giving you rate per hour or it, it doesn't give you rate per hour. You have to calculate by yourself. Let's say question does not give you this number. 
So let's see. For example, we don't have this number, right? Let's assume. So now, okay. So production information follows. You have two harrows and rotator. Anticipated volume, so units for harrow are 8,000 and rotator 15,000. Now direct material cost per unit, right? Per unit. Per unit 35 and 25 for material labor for harrow and 60, 25 for rotator. Right? The controller who is studying the use of activity-based costing has determined that the firm's overhead can be identified with three activities, so which is again cost pool, means combination of overheads. Uh, manufacturing setup, machine processing, and product shipping. Data on the number of setup, machine hours, and outgoing shipments, which are activities three respective cost drivers as follows. So we have some other information. Setup cost, remember, step two, when you use it, step two, that you, you need to use this information for step two, right? This information for step two, machine hour, labor hour, whatever, right? Not, not harrow, not rotator, right? This is the cost of uh, 8,000 harrows, this one, I mean, uh, the drivers, and this is the rotator for 15,000, so you need for total. Next is our firm total overhead is 3 million and 80,000, which is subdivided as follows. Manufacturing setup, 672,000, machine processing, 1,800,000, $1, and product shipping, which is 560,000, right? So now here, apply traditional and ABC to estimates total cost per unit. So you have to do step three, uh, sorry, step six as well, total cost. You have to calculate overhead in your question, material and labor is already given, all right? So now calculate total cost using traditional. Let's check uh, the answer. So let's start with the step one. So I'm writing here. Uh, step one. How much is step one? Total overheads. Three million and eighty thousand. Yes. Three million and eighty thousand. Now step two. Machine hour or labor hours. Machine hours, machine hours, which are 38,500, right? Step three, rate per machine hour. How much? 80, yes, 80 is also given in your question, 80 pounds, uh, 80 pounds. Right now, step four. Step four. So for Harrow, Harrow, Harrow is eighty multiplied by and rotator, rotator. Eighty multiplied by. AD multiply by 50, why 50? 50 is not a machine hour. 16,000, yes. 16,000, 16,000 are machine hours. And rotator, 
22,500. So the overhead is how much? For Harrow, how much is overhead? One million two hundred and eighty thousand. And how about rotator? One million and eight hundred thousand. This is your step four, right? Now we need step five, which is for Harrow and for Rotator. Harrow, so we need direct material plus direct labor plus overheads. How much direct material for Harrow? or calculate, better you tell, calculate total cost. Tell me the total cost for, for Hero. Total cost for Hero. How much is total cost? No, per unit, you have to calculate total cost per unit. Why are you multiplying by 8,000? You have to calculate per unit. Can you see total cost per unit? One unit. Why are you converting one unit into total units? Thirty-five, yes. So no, tell me the total cost for hero and total cost for rotator. Two hundred twenty for hero or for rotator? Is it two hundred and twenty thousand or two hundred and twenty point two oh five? I don't understand what number is it. Is it two dollar? I mean, two hundred and twenty dollar or two hundred and twenty? Hero two hundred and twenty. Okay, and rotator. No, I think something wrong. Let me check. Yes. Let me check. So. Yes, 205, that's right. No, 137 per hour, per unit hour, it's per unit, no, it's wrong number. Right number is 220 and 205. 220 for Harrow and 205 for Rotator. 
this is the right answer. Some student is giving me one, three, four, seven, three per unit. No, it's wrong. How can you get one, three, four? Let me check. No, one, three, four, seven, three is wrong. Right answer is 220 for hero and 205 for rotator. Is that okay, everybody? Did you understand this question? Anybody, any questions? Any question or we move on? Any question or we move on? Why, why 220? You should know why 220. Direct material per units, direct labor per units, and overhead per units. How much is direct material per units for Harrow? Tell me. What is direct material per units for Harrow? Quickly say something and then we move. Yes, 35 and direct labor for Hero. 25. And how much is overhead per unit for Hero? Overhead per unit for Hero. How did you get 80? Why 80? 80 is not, not per unit. 80 is a per machine hour. Yes, 160. Yes, 160, 2.280. 1,280,000 1, divided by 8,000, 160, yes. 160 is a per, per unit overhead. Is not, 80 is not per unit, 80 is a per hour if you check. If you check on the top where I cross it here, is it per unit? Is it overhead cost per unit? It's a rate per hour, which is machine hour, right? Same thing for rotator. So any question? Any other question? Or move on? Any other question or move on, say something? Okay, so no questions, then we can have a break. So I will be back at 2.20, right? I will be back at 2.30, 2 sorry, 2.20, 2.30 p.m., all right? So see you 2.30. Thank you.
So the next method is uh, activity-based costing. Now, activity-based costing, they also have the, the same steps, but of course the information is going to be a little bit different. Under activity-based costing, uh, we cover each and every single activities that's involved in contributing overhead cost. Every activities. But under traditional costing, we focus only on two activities or two factors, which is step two, machine hour or labor hour. We use either machine hour or labor hours, all right, under traditional costing. But under activity-based costing, we cover every information, everything, every factors that contribute to maximize overhead or that any factors that affect this product indirectly under ABC, every factor, every factor called activity, right? Any action, any events that affect the indirect cost of this pen, that's called activity, right? But again, in traditional, we focus only on machine hour or labor hours. Okay, so let's uh, start with the steps. So step one, step one is a cost pool, find cost pool. Find cost pool. Yeah, there now. All right. Find cost pool. Now, what does it mean, cost pool? Cost pool is basically uh, yeah. the types of overhead, right? It's a type of overhead. If you have overhead cost, $1,000, for example, it's an overhead cost. Why $1,000? In $1,000, you may have a rent, right? Let's say $100 is a rent, right? Maybe. $200 is an ordering cost, right? That's also overhead. $300 maintaining cost, that's also overhead, all right? So these are the cost pool, maybe rent, maybe ordering, maybe machine setup, maybe machine maintenance, so on, right? So these are the cost pool. So cost pool, be, cost pool could be anything, all right? So combination of all, all cost pool is the total overhead, mm -hmm. all right? I already told you last time. Right? So that's your cost pool. Second thing is find cost driver. Cost driver means the reason of the cost pool. For example, cost pool is a rent. Rent. What is the, which factors affect the rent. I mean, how we calculate the rent? Rent depends upon the square feet. You know square feet, so sometimes we call it meter square. So square feet is, is the base or the factors that affect the rent. Higher the, the, the square feet, larger the area, the larger the area, higher the rent, all right? So, is a cost driver, all right? Another cost pool is a ordering cost. Right? So I'm writing driver, driver for rent. Remember, driver for rent is a square feet or meter square, whatever you want to call it. Second cost pool is the ordering cost, the cost of order. And of course, ordering cost, what is the factor 
behind the ordering cost? I mean, uh, what, which factors affect the ordering cost? Ordering cost affected by number of order. If you order more, your ordering cost will increase. You order less, ordering cost will decrease. This number of order is your cost driver, right? Another one is the setup, setup cost. Setup means, let's say, before you start using machine, you have to, you have to set the machine, or you have to arrange the machine, machine so in order to produce the, the, the precise uh, quality or the quantity of the product, right? So this is called the setup. And setup depends upon your setup cost, arranging the cost machine lead to the cost, and that's arrangement depends upon your number of setup. How many times you set up, set your machine. You set machine more time, your setup cost will increase. So number of setup. Number of setup. Remember, these are the not only cost driver and cost pool. It's just an example for you to understand what is the meaning of cost pool, what is the meaning of cost driver. Cost driver means the reason behind each cost pool. So remember, if you have three pool, you have three driver, four pool, four driver, all right? And be careful about the driver. Use the right driver for the right pool, like a square feet, for example. Square feet used for rent, because rent measurement depends upon square feet. We don't use square feet for ordering cost. We don't use square feet for machine setup, all right? Similarly, Number of orders for ordering cost. Number of setup for setup cost. Make sure you match correctly. So cost pool and cost drivers are given in your question, but you have to be very careful. Don't mix up the drivers, right? Keep them separate, right? Separate pool, five pool, five driver, four pool, four driver, right? So remember this thing. Step three is the same, all right? Step three is overhead rate or absorption rate overhead rate right so overhead rate is step one step two right but here a little bit different here compared to traditional costing so remember for example in this question we have a three pool right so we have three pool three pools so we have three drivers right three drivers so which means we have we have three rates three rates obviously cost pool is a rent cost driver square feet for example cost pool is a ordering cost cost driver is a number of order cost pool is a setup and cost driver is number of setup so cost pool divided by cost driver so you have three rates and then you write three rates make sure you write three rates very clearly for example first rate is a rate per square feet for rent per square feet and rate per order and rate per setup same like as we, we did it in our traditional costing. But in traditional costing, we have only one rate because we are using either machine hour or labor hour. But in activity-based costing, we cover every single activity that lead to the cost. So like all these things. It could be three, four, five, six. If you have six cost pool, obviously six cost driver. The six cost pool, six cost driver, six rates, six different rates, all right? So which affects the overhead cost differently, right? Step four is the same like as traditional costing, which is apply overhead cost. Apply overhead cost using rates. The rates from rates from step three right. that's all all right for example here is a product product a all right if you produce product a 
it require um, two square feet place to keep this product right this product when we when you produce this product you order three times so three number of order number of orders you order three times right and set up you set up four times your number of setup setup number this information for product a so you have to just multiply by rate square feet rate with square feet rate and rate same exactly same like as traditional costing in traditional costing we have only one which is machine hour multiply by rate here we have three rates and check how much uh, square feet or order or setup required to make one product right and then this is your overhead cost and you add them all right so that's become your overhead cost and that's your answer for step four step five is the same as step five is same as traditional costing right so that's your activity based costing that's why in the beginning of the class i told you that activity based costing is a more time consuming but it's more precisely it's going to give you it's going to give you exact measurement of your overhead cost but traditional costing if you focus on machine hour then you miss labor hour if you focus on labor hour you miss machine hour but here we cover every single thing all right every activities that affect this pen we use this activity so this activity could be two three four five like as i explain you three pool three drivers so means three different activities involved so three rates using three rates we calculate the overhead we add them all that's your overhead all right understand yes or no So can we move on to the calculation now? Question one. Can we move on to the calculation of question one? Or you have any question? So let's move on to the calculations. So let's move on to the question one. You already know question one, right? You have all information. You have course pool. So you can see that you have, if you read in the beginning, you have five indirect course pool, obviously course pool. Purchasing material, handling sorry purchasing is a one material handling two machine maintenance three product inspection four and packaging five so you have a five pool you can also see that five pool and that, that's not here so that, that's your driver that's your pool All right that's your pool one two three four five five pool so pool of combination is a total overheads and that's your driver so that's your step one that's your step two right you have step three which is rate so you have five rates all right so rate per order per move per machine hour per inspection and per unit produce right so you have five rates now step four allocate right allocate simple if you if you make job 215 it require 25 order 10 material move 40 machine hour 
nine inspection and 15 unit produce. So simply multiply by rate, whatever rates you calculate in your step three and make sure you use the right, right rate for the right uh, factor, right? So don't, don't mix or don't match wrong. Right? Otherwise your question will be wrong. Same thing for the question, or oh, sorry, same for the job three to five. All right, so now calculate overhead cost using activity-based costing. So let's check for uh, question one. Question one. So tell me step one. Step one. So we have five pools, right? So quickly tell me one by one, fast, do it fast. You have, you have to do one by, you have to write, you're just simply writing the number. I don't know what that number means. Someone is writing 70,000 divided by 2000. I don't know what does it mean. So you have to go by name. Course pool is very important by name, right? So you have five different cost pool. What is your first cost pool? What is first cost pool? Purchasing, 70,000. Purchasing, 70,000, yes. What is next? Material handling. Material handling, 87,500. What is next? Machine maintenance, machine maintenance, which is 237,300. Next. Product inspection, product inspection, which is 18,900. And finally, packaging, packaging, which is 39,900, right? So all these are dollars or money, whatever you call it, right? Next, step two, I'm writing here, step two. So step two, cost driver. What are the cost driver for purchasing? Cost driver for purchasing. Purchase order. So purchase order, which are 2000, right? Material moves, material handling for material move, which is 5000. Material maintenance, machine hours, for machine maintenance, sorry, machine maintenance. Machine hour are 10,500, right? And product inspection, inspection is, 1,200, right? And finally, units, 3,800. That's your step two, right? Now, step three. Step three, 
step three which is a rate rate per so the first one per order how much 35 so it's a money 35 dollar per order next uh, material handling 17.5 next 22.6 for machine maintenance product inspection 15.75 product inspection and packaging 10.5 so it's a remember it's a per per all these things now next so that's all your rate for step three now step four Step four, so we have uh, two products. All right, so less I'm writing here, step better I write here, step four. Step four. Step four for, um, for job 215, all right, job 215. And for job 325 three to five right. so quickly tell me for two and five two and five is how much for job two and five eight hundred and seventy five and all in all in orders and 175 for Material handling, then 905 for machine maintenance, then 904 or 905. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's in decimals. Right. And product inspection, 142, 142 for product inspection, and packaging 158. All right? And how about job? Three to five is one four. How about is job three to five purchasing how much? 280, 280 for purchasing. Material handling 70, right? And material, machine maintenance 1356, 1356. Product inspection, 47, right. and packaging is 63. Right. And you have to add them all, right? You need to add. So total, this is your uh, step four. So total, how much is for step four? Job 215, so these two are the jobs. So job 215, how much is total? Two, two, five, four. Oh. Two, two, five, four. And one, eight, one, six. Why is two, two, five, four? Because last five, 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 and five, it should be zero. I don't know. And here is six. 716, that's okay, but I don't know why. Make sure you check again, is it 2254? Yes, 225. 2255, yes. Okay, so that's your step four. Now we can do it, so question, Question is finished, all right? But if you want, we can do step five as well. If we need overhead cost per unit, which is two, two, five, five divided by 15, right? 
and 1816 divided by 6, I guess. But make sure you check again and tell me how much is step 5, which is overhead cost per unit. One hundred and fifty for job two one five. This is job two one five. Right. And job three to five is three o three. All right. That's your per unit. Right. Overhead cost per unit, which is we estimate per unit, but your question. As per your question, this is the answer, right? This is the answer, but we just move it one more further to get exact uh, cost of one unit. So question one following uh, activity-based costing is finished. Any question? Question one? No question. If no question, let's move on to the uh, question uh, two. So that's your uh, question two. So here is your question two. Do it question two. You, you, this question you can do it very fast because it's very short. Right? Don't take too long, hardly 10 minutes, right? So 3.15, finish, right? The so seven minutes or eight minutes are, are enough. So do it. Do it, make sure you calculate uh, total cost. Like as we calculate total cost 220 and 205 following, um, following traditional, right? And now we have to calculate ABC. So do that now. So let's uh, let's have a look at uh, the um, solution for for this one. Question two, which is for ABC. So we have uh, step one. So tell me the step one. Tell me step one, cost pool. How many cost pools we have? Tell me the name of cost pool, not just a number. Manufacturing setup. Manufacturing setup six seven two right thousand. What is next? Machine processing, which is one eight four eight thousand, and the third one is product shipping, product shipping which is 560,000, 560,000. That's your three pool, I guess, 
right? So now step two. Step two is a cost driver. Step two. So how much is the cost driver of product ship manufacturing setup? Yes, what is the name? Number of setup? Yes, 80. So 80 setups. 80 setup. Uh, machine setup. Okay, 38500. 38500 are your machine hours. And outgoing shipments are 175. 175 your outgoing shipments. So these are the step two. Now, step three, which is cost pool divided by cost driver, so which is the rate per. So tell me one by one, step three. 8,400, 48, and 3,200. So these are the rate, rate per setup, rate per machine hour, Right. Rate per machine hour and rate rate per outgoing shipments. Right. Next is a uh, step four. Step four we have uh, two products, which is uh, Harrow. Right. We have Harrow and we have rotator right so for hero how much is uh, this 400 and hero 420000 420000 768000 and 320000 right now rotator that's your step 4 Rotator, we have uh, 76,800. Rotator. Why someone said 76,000? No, it's 252. 252,000 and 1080,000 and 240,000, right? So, Harrow, how much? Step four. Eight one six eight hundred, right? For Harrow and Rotator, one five seven two thousand, right? For Rotator, right? Now we need. Step five, step five, which is total cost per unit. Total cost per unit, which is, which is direct material, right? Direct labor and overhead cost per units for hero, and for rotator. So Hero 162 is the total, right? How much is the total? You have to tell me the total. 
Total means direct material per units, direct labor per units, and overhead per unit. So 162 for Harrow. 162 for Harrow. Um, for rotator, it's uh, 192, right? Rotator is 190, sorry, zero. All right. So that's your overhead cost. using um, activity-based costing, All right? So now you can compare the results. This is results from ABC and result from traditional. If you have a look, your traditional result, I guess it was 220, right? And 205, right? I think that was the, the, the results. So you can see, so now the question is, which one is more accurate? So obviously this one is more accurate. Why it's more accurate? Because when you calculate activity-based costing, you cover every single activity, which is setup, machine hour, or outgoing shipments. You did not miss any uh, machine hours and outgoing shipments. You did not miss any activity. You use all, which is three, all activities. But when you calculate traditional costing, you can see you use only machine hours. Only machine hours. So which means you ignore setup and outgoing shipments under traditional costing. So whatever allocation we have here, whatever allocation we have here, that allocation do not consider setup and outgoing shipments. All right, so by that reason, the results under traditional costing and activity-based costing is different. All right, result under activity-based costing and traditional costing cannot be same because activity covered everything, All right? Even though you have machine hour and labor hour, only machine hour and labor hour, activity-based costing cover both because it's cover all activities, all cost pool, all cost driver, cost pool related to machine hour, cost pool related to labor hours, right? But traditional costing, either machine hour or labor hours, whichever is higher. So again, if, if traditional costing focus on machine hour, it, it quit or it leave the, the labor hour. If it's focused on labor hour, it will leave the machine hour. So again, traditional costing will not give us the exact cost, whatever cost is allocated for a single product. But for small companies, that's okay. So that's why small company apply it. As I said, tradition activity-based costing is a more time-consuming process, all right? So that's why large company um, apply this because they can afford all the timing, the process that uh, that accountant has to, to spend to estimate the overhead cost of one product. This is just example of three cost pools, but in companies could be three, four, five, 50, 100, 100, I mean, 200, five, 500, it depends how big is your company. More big companies, more complicated process, more activities involved. Small company, less activities, less complication. That's why small companies, that's why small companies apply traditional costing. So make it very simple. So traditional costing, easy to calculate. 
but activity based base costing more lengthy process more more time consuming process so that's the whole idea for your activity based costing and traditional costing right now someone send me another inf information is uh uh she said the total overhead cost is for Harold. It's not this. She said it's wrong number, All right? It's one five zero eight thousand. Okay. Anyway, that, that's you can calculate because right now I don't have any calculator. So um, better you you do it by yourself. You, you already understand what is the procedure to to estimate it. All right. So if these numbers are wrong, so you can easily check uh, these numbers. All right. So you check by yourself. Again, you check here too. All right. So you know how to do this. So is is it's if it's calculation, if like multiplications or addition has a problem, so you check by yourself. All right. That's that's all for activity based costing and traditional costing. All right. So topic uh, four is finished. Any question regarding topic four or regarding previous topics or regarding tomorrow's midterm exam? Anybody has any question regarding tomorrow's exam or regarding topic one to topic four? Any question or we stop here? Do we study offline in the next class? Tomorrow we have a midterm exam. So tomorrow I'll see you in the, in the university. Exams cannot be offline, all right? So tomorrow when you will come to class, then I will, I will tell you about the next online class. All right, but again, tomorrow you have exams, so you have to come to uh, you have to come tomorrow um, in the in, in the class. All right, so don't be late tomorrow 12 30 right? We will have new topic for tomorrow uh, tomorrow. You may not study next topics tomorrow You will come for a midterm exam and then finish and then we can stop for tomorrow all Right tomorrow. I may not start uh, our next topic all Right So tomorrow you just only come for uh, mid mid exam Any other question? Say something, any question, yes or no, or we stop? If no question, okay, no question. If no questions, then uh, we stop here. I'll see you tomorrow, 12.30, all right? So don't be late, be on time. If you're late, you lose your time to finish your exam. So um, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.